Hi there, and welcome to Catholic Partnership Schools Catholic Schools Week Teacher Spotlight. Today we have with us Tim and Cheryl. Welcome, Tim and Cheryl. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Tim and Cheryl, could you both introduce yourselves and let us know, um, you know, what your role is at Sacred Heart? Sure. Um, I have been at Sacred Heart. I first worked as an assistant in second grade back when we first moved to Camden in 2007. And then after I uh, got my Montessori training and master's, came back and helped to start the Montessori program in 2015. Oh, wow. So that's where I am now, teaching the program. Wonderful. Well, 13 years. That's great. <laughs> and I first started also in 2007 as the physical education teacher. I, I moved into the role, in addition to PE teacher, also the administrative assistant. Um, I took two years off to take care of one of our, our youngest child. And then I am back now as the physical education teacher, as well as a few other roles. We're also both involved in the PTO. We're the parents of three Sacred Heart students, our, our three children. That's great. Well, wow. What a family. That's a family there at Sacred Heart for sure. That's great. That's great. Well, guys, I know that this year has been very challenging. Obviously, you have your three little ones at home. So could you just talk to us a little bit about what are some of the challenges that have really put a damper on your normal teaching routine or your normal family routine? Mm -hmm. Sure. So if you're familiar at all with Montessori, um, the approach is all about hands-on learning. We have a classroom full of materials that the children work with, and we provide individualized one-on-one -on -one instruction. So trying to figure out how to do that when the kids are all at home felt, felt paralyzing, honestly, at first. You know, I couldn't send a classroom home with them. I couldn't, um, you know, to have that one-on-one -on -one back and forth that we're so used to. So it really felt like I had to just totally rethink about how, how we do things to try and keep the essence of individualizing and helping each child develop while totally changing what it looked like in the, in the details. Absolutely. I can only imagine Tim trying to be a PE teacher in this environment. I'm sure that right. had some challenges. <laughs> right. I'm used to having a very collaborative, um, collective experience. It's a very, phys ed is obviously very physical, not only in our bodies, but also the physical space, movement, children learning how to respect and work around each other, teamwork. And so to suddenly go to this very sort of isolated, individualized, all in our own homes or on a video in a virtual environment um, is a very big shift. Um, and, and then also as a parent, seeing some of the small, like I felt like I went through some of the stresses, maybe to a smaller degree than some other families, but having challenges with internet or having three children and trying to figure out what space are they going to work in where they're not interrupting each other, distracting each other, um, the challenges of scheduling and all of that. So yeah, definitely some challenges. And then guys, I know there's probably like a million things that you've had to do, but what are maybe one or two things that you've had to do to kind of pivot from what you would normally do to be able to support your families and your students from home? So I think one of the most important things has been not trying to do it alone, you know, just to really connect with teachers within our school as well as teachers nationwide and sharing resources sharing ideas um, and just helping each other. So we've been able to partner with other schools who are in similar circumstances with similar curriculum to share resources and ideas. Um, so that's been a huge support. And then in terms of the actual teaching, uh, what we've done to try and maintain the Montessori individualized learning, hands-on learning, um, we put together kits of home learning materials. So modified versions of many of the things we have in the classroom that the children could use with pre-recorded videos that they could still have that pause it if they need to, if they need to take a little bit more time with the step and still have that differentiated learning that we know is so important for them. We spent hours uh, <laughs> printing and laminating and cutting a little individualized movable alphabet for each child so that every child has multiple letters of every letter in the alphabet uh, organized in a, in a container as well as the numerals and punctuation and so every child can write with their movable alphabet at home so oh my goodness. 
a lot of volunteer oh. help. Oh, really <laughs> I can see it. that. <laughs> when, when we saw the pictures and we saw the videos about how the materials yes. were being used, it felt so worth it. And that's one of the things that I think has been really important is finding ways to keep the sense of connection. You know, our schools are families. And so it's been so hard having the physical distance between us. Um, but using things like Flipgrid, which is a very easy technology that the kids can make videos of when we were doing letter sounds, find something in your house that starts with mmm and make a little video showing us and then they can see each other. So Aww. then it's not a lot of extra work put on parents because that's the other thing. We tried to not add any more work as much as we could to parents who are already juggling so much, um, but still giving kids a fun way to see each other and interact. Sure. Well, I'm sure as parents, you were clearly uh, cognizant of that fact, um, having to now yes. juggle three children, yourselves, your workload, and um, everything else that comes along with, you know, being a family on a daily basis. So one of the other things that I just wanted to ask you was, what is one lesson learned from all of this? I know there's probably a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of trial and error, but is there one thing that stuck out for both of you? Yeah, so, and related to how I've, how I've pivoted, so I think that question is related to how I've pivoted um, to provide effective instruction. We, uh, every day, every PE period, we always start our class with a prayer. We pray, dear Lord, please bring me the focus and ability to do my best to strive for fitness, to get good rest, to care for myself in all that I do, to respect my neighbors and love you too. Amen. Oh. And I feel like the sense of that, it kind of summarizes what I hope for my students as well as myself and anyone is that we would become more and more caretakers of ourselves and our neighbors. And um, I feel like one of the lessons that I've learned is how important the home and school connection is. And in some ways, despite all the challenges, if I were to see a positive opportunity, it's that my phys ed class, my education has moved into their home, which, I, so I always hope that my teaching isn't just one period and then they go off and forget about it. I hope that it carries into the rest of their life. And so this is an opportunity where when I've taught a live class, sometimes a younger sibling or a parent will come and join in the warmups <laughs> or a family will join in the jumping. Um, I even had um, one time I was out walking in the neighborhood and one of our school families who also lives in the neighborhood, an aunt yelled out the door, hey, is that Mr. Tim? I was like, hey, and she's like, <laughs> Mr. Tim, are you doing your videos? And you basically become like one of our family members. We're doing those videos together. And Aww. I feel like, what a privilege, an honor, an opportunity for my education to extend to the families and vice versa, families to give me support and encouragement. So I feel like that connection is so has always been so important and continues to be. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I think, you know, one of the things, obviously, you mentioned that you send your three kids to Sacred Heart, but you also live in the neighborhood. So I think that is just a really beautiful connection. I mean, you are a part of not only the church, the school, the community. It's really a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl, anything that you wanted to add in regards to a lesson learned? Yes, I, I was thinking about how a year ago we could just have never imagined how much and how many times we would just totally shift how we do school and how we you know think about our structures, our methods, um, and you know the circumstances that have made this happen are not, you know, have been so challenging and not ones that we want to live with any longer than we have to. Sure. Hope is that even as hopefully our circumstances will stabilize, so we can maintain this knowledge that we are capable of making huge changes and shifts in how we how we do things that had seemed impossible. And so, you know, if there are opportunities to, you know, rethink the ways that we do school in ways that better meet the needs of our school family, you know, our students, their families and our staff, that we could have maintained that creativity and courage to try 
really different things. Oh, that's great. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to ask one thing, and I know this seems like it's probably so far away at this point, but after all this is said and done, what is the one thing that you're most looking forward to? I love springtime. And so, you know, I Fortunately, springtime's coming no matter what, as far sure. as, <laughs> um, and so I am so looking forward to getting outside and just sharing the wonder of all the changes that come in springtime with my students. And hopefully, you know, even if things are not totally back to normal, we can at least still plant in our garden and, you know, have some of those experiences that I love so much. Ah, and how about you, Tim? I am on one level, I'm so excited to just get back into the gym to see and be able to give them, give each other a hug or jump in a hula hoop together or share a ball back and forth. So I can't wait for physical education as I knew it to return. And on a deeper level, I hope that I'm looking forward to continuing to do the work of working toward educational equity and as well as racial and economic equity and respect and dignity. And so I hope maybe our society and we can learn about how to greater uh, provide that more and more um, and live into our calling to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with God. Absolutely. Well, I'm sure we're, we're all praying for that. Absolutely. And I'm hoping guys when, um, when springtime comes and when you get back in the gym, you have to send us some videos of all that great stuff that's happening, the planning and the hula hooping and all that. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being a part of the Catholic Partnership Schools community. Thank you for all you do for Sacred Heart. Thank you for all you do for your students, your families, and your community. And thanks for being with us again. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us.